Welcome to The Technocracy, the news podcast answering the single most important question, what are the most important trends and news from the standpoint of the machine, where we remove humanity from the loop and let machine learning and other artificial intelligence systems decide what is important to know as we all work towards a technological singularity. In this edition, we're going to review what the singularity index is and why we care about it. To start with, you should not use this tool. We are not responsible if you do. By listening or reviewing the transcript, you agree that it's your fault. The singularity index, also referred to as the SI, is part of a statistical approach to looking at market trends as it relates to relative motion in the market towards or away from singularity. More than just an intellectual curiosity, the SI is a useful tool for those interested in helping the companies that are moving us towards singularity. Let's start by defining a common set of taxonomy we can use to talk intelligently about it. Here's our starting point. First, index, in terms of a market index, for example, the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, is a statistical measure of change in an economy of a given securities market. In the case of financial markets, an index is an imaginary portfolio of securities representing a particular market or portion of it. Each index has its own calculation method and is usually expressed in terms of change from base value or fiat amount, such as the US dollar for the NASDAQ. The term singularity normally is a reference to the less ambiguous term technological singularity, which is a hypothesis that accelerating progress in technologies will cause a runaway effect, wherein artificial intelligence will exceed human intellectual capacity and control, thus radically changing or even ending civilization, an event called the singularity. And for the purpose of this article, I will define it as a point in which AI is greater than human intellect. I realize that others may define singularity a number of different ways, but by using the definition, we have a narrower scope that we felt would be easier to quantify for the probability of a specific outcome and thus more easily measured. Let us ask the question, why do we need a singularity index? The SI is about measuring relative motion that helps in setting corporate strategy and market position, as well as track innovation towards singularity. With that in mind, there are no guarantees. It is a tool we share with others that you might find it useful, but if you go and invest 50 million in some market element and it crashes, that's on you. We are not stockbrokers or market experts, but technologists using machine intelligence to better do our jobs. Any use you find for this information is at your own risk. So to be clear, the purposes for us are first, to identify relative motion in the market or industry towards or away from singularity. Second, to identify key market leaders in this very specific segment to watch and to watch for innovation from these key corporate players. And third, to identify key areas in terms of the singularity index where we might invest, not you, in that segment of the SI to help drive not just success, but a balanced approach to singularity by driving success in the weak segments to turn them around or at least contribute towards that end. So how is it calculated? Explaining how this is calculated should really be broken down in, into its constituent parts, as it can be somewhat complex. Even if you get the basic math down, there are additional formulas for generating the factors that affect the index. If you don't like math, it's a good plan to skip these details, which you can find online. In terms of execution, we have a list of stock prices where we recursively weight them based on a predefined set of weights to develop a composite score or value that can be expressed in dollars where weights deal with things like market cap so that we are comparing apples to apples metaphorically, as well as weighting for importance. For example, in a segment where there is only one supplier for a critical component that all the companies developing AI have to work with, then this particular stock value is going to affect the market much more than say if there are five sources, making the stability of that company or firm much more important. So to touch on the math another way, we first get a list of stock prices based on a certain logical map that determines the kinds of sectors that affect singularity. This could be anything from quantum processors or rare earth minerals to companies actually doing research in AI or building critical AI infrastructure. Then, based on a number of factors, we also get a list of composite weights for each stock price. These are then recursively multiplied prices times or price times weight and added together to get a sum value that is the final computed index for any given time. So what is the secret sauce? Okay, you caught me. There is a secret sauce. 
and that is the selection criteria matrix used to determine when a company is included in the index and how the weight is computed for any given segment. This really is a complicated process on its own, and we felt that for now we will gloss over those elements in favor of the SI overview. At a high level, we are basically breaking down the technology groups needed to achieve AI in terms of market segments, from companies funding research into the human mind to ones focused on artificial intelligence or related technologies. For example, Google is on the index. It is weighted a percentage based on market cap size, R&D budgets, innovation consistency, and segment size, where these are all factors. Additionally, a company like D-Wave, that is the only commercially viable quantum processor, is on the index, and currently they are the only ones really that are competitive in the segment, as opposed to Google, where there are other companies that are directly going against Google, such as Microsoft, which is also on the index. The weights are evaluated each quarter to determine the formula template for that company, for that quarter, and for the overall weights applied to each given stock on the index to compute the final index value. It is this index value over time that then is useful in addressing relative movement, looking for the relative spike that would precede a theoretical singularity, which would show on the SI before it would spike theoretically, for instance, an index like the NASDAQ. Besides this, the main uses for us then is trend analysis, understanding where we can drive balance across key segments to help use the market to foster motion towards singularity. With that, feel free to send us questions. We reserve the right to ignore the ones we don't think are important. And a special thanks to our sponsors. Looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Technocracy.